Good morning and welcome to our service for Rathfriden and Bally Ward on this Sunday the 21st of February 2021, the first Sunday in Lent. Welcome also to any who are joining us from the Achader group of parishes and also anyone from Newcastle who's with us or indeed wherever you're tuning in from this morning. We're really glad to have you with us. I know that our children and young people, many of you have been enjoying half term week and I'm sure it's been lovely just to have a few days away from online learning. And even though we can't travel too far at the moment, it's nice just to have a little change of routine. So I hope that you and your families are feeling well refreshed after half term. There's quite a lot going on this week, um, so let me just fill you in. On Tuesday evening, you're very welcome to our midweek fellowship group. That takes place over Zoom at eight o'clock. And if you don't have the Zoom access codes, but you'd like to join with us, you'd be more than welcome. Then on Wednesday evening, there's another in the series of first aid for mental health workshops that are running at the moment. And this is at seven o'clock. Again, it meets on Zoom. It's organised by our diocesan youth officer. And these sessions are designed to help us recognise signs in people's lives that might show that all is not well with mental health and then how we can best listen and support others and signpost them to others who can offer further help. Um, there are four of these workshops running. The one this Wednesday is particularly for young adults in the 18 to 25 age group. Um, it's free to attend, but you do need to register in advance and you can find the details for that on our Facebook page and it'll take you through to the link um, on our diocesan page where you can register your interest. Um, the future workshops on the following two Wednesdays will be for church leaders on Wednesday the 3rd of March and then for all parents and guardians on Wednesday the 10th of March. So do keep those dates in mind and you can sign up for those future events at this stage also. Then on Thursday evening uh, at seven o'clock, our Youth Alpha for the whole diocese gets underway. And um, this is being run by Tim Burns, our diocesan youth officer. And Tim and some of his colleagues are going to run Youth Alpha over eight weeks beginning this Thursday. It's for anyone in school years 10 to 13. And it's a great way to just explore the Christian faith, what it means, why Jesus came, and why he died for us and then what that means for us to have faith in our lives. So I really encourage any of our young people in years 10 to 13 at school, um, why not sign up and come along? And if you need more info, just let me know and we can get that to you. Also to say that the Register of General Vestry Persons is currently open for revision at the moment. Um, to be a member of the General Vestry, you have to be a, a parishioner or someone who attends the parish regularly and you have to have made a recorded financial donation to the life of the parish also. Being on the, the register entitles you to vote at the Easter Vestry and to stand for election to the Select Vestry and certain other positions within the life of the church also. Um, there's a short form to fill out if you aren't registered. Uh, just get in touch with me or one of the church wardens and we can get that to you. And if you've registered in the past and your name has never come off the register, then don't worry, it simply rolls over from one year to the next automatically, provided you've fulfilled the conditions um, each year, your name should still have stayed on the register. I think that's all the announcements for this week. Today is our family service, our all age service Sunday. And we're going to be thinking particularly on this first Sunday in Lent about the temptations that Jesus faced when he was in the wilderness. But let's begin by greeting one another. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. We have a great high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Amen. We're going to sing our opening song of praise. Oh, 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 how good is the Lord.
to confess our sins, to say sorry to God for the things that we've got wrong. The Bible tells us if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and ask for his forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord, please forgive us when we have said yes to sin, when we have failed to love you, chosen to ignore you and done what we have wanted to do. Please forgive us. Please forgive us when we have put ourselves first, lived selfishly and not cared about other people. Please forgive us. Thank you that you chose the path of love and died on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to change and we need your help. Help us to follow you and walk the path of the cross, saying no to sin, loving you with all of our hearts and loving other people as we love ourselves. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May Almighty God, who came into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And let's join together in the special prayer or the collect of today, the first Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before our Bible reading this morning, I'd like to show you this fabulous display that's on the door of the hall over at St John's and it's been put together by the St John's Sunday School and their teacher. It's a display of a rainbow made with hands of all of our Sunday School members and you can see that the rainbow's there to remind us that God's with us even through the hardest times that he's faithful to us and he will bring us through them. And also all the hands of all the different people are a reminder that we're all part of God's family, that we're together brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And so that's a great encouragement to us as well, that we're not on our own, but God gives us one another to love each other, to support and encourage each other, especially through the hard times. So if you happen to be passing the hall on John Street, do stop and take a little closer look at this amazing display and well done to all of our Sunday School and your teachers for putting it together. Now it's time for our Bible reading this morning and I'm going to hand over to Sasha who's bringing our reading to us. Today's Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. 
The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came back and attended him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're going to think a little bit more about each of those three temptations that Jesus faced in the wilderness from the devil. I wonder, did you notice from Matthew chapter 4, how long Jesus had been in the desert when these temptations came his way? Well, it tells us that he'd been there for 40 days and 40 nights. And during all of that time, he had been fasting. He hadn't had anything to eat. I wonder if you had a nice breakfast this morning. I'm sure if you have, your stomach's feeling nice and full. And that's a good feeling. But, you know, even if we miss one meal, if we skip breakfast someday because we're in a hurry, we know about it by mid-morning, don't we? Our tummies start to rumble and we feel pretty hungry pretty quickly. Well, Jesus hadn't eaten for 40 days and 40 nights. And maybe it's no surprise that because he was hungry, the devil knew where to target him. He knew where Jesus was weak at that point. Sometimes... That's the devil's tactic. He looks and sees the vulnerable parts in our lives, maybe the places where, where we feel a little bit weak or shaky ourselves. And that's where he comes and brings the test to us. So how did the devil tempt Jesus in the first place? Well, there must have been some of these in the desert, some rocks, because we're told that the devil has some rocks and he brings them to Jesus and he says, if you are the son of God, turn these rocks, these stones into, can you remember? That's right. Turn them into bread. Now, I'm not sure that Hovis bread existed a way back 2000 years ago. Um, so it maybe wasn't quite like this bread, but you get the idea. And the important thing was that just at that moment, Jesus was hungry and some bread would have been so, so tempting to him. But I wonder, did you notice how Jesus responded to the devil's temptation? Actually, not just the first temptation, but all three times he uses some words from the Bible to respond. Jesus had obviously stored some memory verses in his head. He knew the Bible so that when difficult times came, when challenging moments came, he could remember God's word. He could remember what God thought and how God had how God teaches us to respond in certain situations. And he was able to use the Bible to come back against the temptations of the devil. In this first temptation, Jesus quotes some words from the book of Deuteronomy. He says to the devil that it says in scripture, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You see, Jesus knew that bread is important, food is important, and thank God for all the good food that we have to enjoy. Actually, during Lent, it's a good time to remember the needs of others and, and maybe to reach out and, and help some others who, who don't have so many good things to enjoy as we do. But Jesus knew that there's something that we need fed on that isn't bread, isn't any other kind of physical food. It's a spiritual food. It's God's word, the Bible. And we can feed on God's word so that we know and learn the mind of God and we can start to understand his ways and live them out for ourselves as well. 
Jesus could have turned the stones into bread if he'd wanted to. After all, it wouldn't be too much longer until he would feed 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fishes. But Jesus knew that his hunger in that moment was deepening his dependence on God. It was reminding him that he was dependent on his Father, just like all human beings, for life and health and food. And so Jesus wanted to show in that moment that he trusted his Father, that he was ready to depend upon him and to face hard times, trusting God and knowing that God would bring him through. So the first temptation, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We can trust Jesus even when we face hard times. He's with us and he brings us through. We're going to sing together again and our next hymn is very appropriate because it talks about receiving the food of God's holy word. So let's sing together. Speak, O Lord. Including Lee, who's doing the camera work, um, he's going to zoom in a wee bit and let you see outside. And you can probably tell now that we're in the square. Um, you might be able to see the church just down at the end of the square there, the head of the square. And we're actually in the old Belfast Bank, and we've come right up to the top floor of the bank. And look, you can see uh, right all the way out. What a wonderful view, looking all the way down towards Newry and the hills beyond. It's incredible up here. Well, there is a reason why we've come up to one of the highest points in the whole of the town, and that's because we've come to the second of the three temptations that Jesus faced in the wilderness from the desert. So we're going to read again from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, and this time we're reading from verse 5. Then the devil took Jesus 
into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, On the other hand it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. I wonder, do you have a head for heights? I don't particularly like heights. And we were going to go right up to the top of the church tower to record this little section today. But it was just too windy and uh, we didn't fancy going up there. But this part of the, the passage tells us that the devil took Jesus to a very, very high place, right to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem, which would have been far, far higher than even where we're standing today. And there was no window for protection, so it must have been a very nerve-wracking place to be. The reason the devil took Jesus there was for this second temptation. And the devil said to Jesus that if you really are the Son of God, then throw yourself off the side of the temple, because surely doesn't God's word say that the angels will come and save you and pick you up so that you don't fall to the ground? And I suppose really what the devil was asking Jesus to do was to make God prove himself. And Jesus very wisely responded. Did you see again that he responded with some words from the Bible himself? He said, you shall not put your God, the Lord your God to the test. You see, the thing is, God does protect us. He protects his people, but we don't need him to prove that. We don't need God to prove his love to us. We don't need him to prove his faithfulness to us because he has already done that when he sent Jesus to be our saviour. The Bible tells us that the way we know God loves us is by looking to Jesus and what he did for us. That when he stretched out his arms and gave his life for us on the cross so that our sin could be paid for, God showed us in the most amazing and the best way of all that he loves us, that he's faithful to us and that he will stay with us no matter what. In fact, his promise is to stay with us even through death and then to the world to come when we'll see him face to face. Maybe sometimes we have questions about our faith and that's okay. We all have moments like that. And it's good to be honest with God about our struggles and our fears and to bring them to him. But we never have to ask God to prove himself to us. We don't have to put God to the test because he has already shown that he is faithful right to the very end. And in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let Tomorrow. 
tomorrow brings. With each morning I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Road um, up in Bally Ward, and you can see behind me that we're looking out over the Mourn Mountains. There's just a little bit of light left, and hopefully, you can pick up the mountains. And so, we're at another high place, and the reason for that is because we're told in Matthew 4 that the third temptation of Jesus also took place at a high point. Let me read to you verses 8 and onwards. Again, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What thing you would like to have or to own most of all? What would be the one thing that you think, that would just be the thing that I would want? Well, the devil promised Jesus that he could have not just one thing, but everything. He promised him all the kingdoms of the world. Uh, we can't see all the kingdoms of the world from up here. We can just see some of the kingdom of Morn. But imagine being promised absolutely everything in the world. That's what the devil said that Jesus could have on one condition that he would bow down and worship the devil. And thankfully, Jesus was once again able to see through the devil's lies and tricks. You see, so often in life, we think that something will bring us all the happiness, all the fulfillment that we've ever wanted. But really what we discover after a little while is that the things that we thought were going to be the best things of all, that would make us happiest of all, actually after a while, 
they start to lose their appeal, they start to lose their excitement, and we discover that actually they're not quite as wonderful as we thought they would be. The only one thing, the only one person who can really bring us deep, deep fulfillment is Jesus himself, because Jesus says that he is the very bread of life. And that's why Jesus knew that nothing should take his focus away from worshipping the Lord his God, his Father in heaven. Because he never fails. He never lets us down. And that's the great promise for us today. Let's remember, like Jesus did, that nothing else can satisfy in the way that God can. And let's pray that we would never give our worship to anything or anyone other than Jesus himself. Well, I'm glad to be back indoors again after being outside in those windy and high up places. But what have we learned today about the temptations that Jesus faced? Well, we've seen that in all of them, the devil was trying to divert Jesus off God's path for his life. He was trying to take him onto a path of trusting himself rather than trusting his heavenly father. He was trying to take him onto a path of seeking power for himself rather than serving others. And he was trying to take him onto a path of seeking fame for himself and testing God rather than the path of humility. But thankfully, each time Jesus was able to use the strength of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit to resist the devil's temptations and to stay on his mission. The reason he came to go to the cross where he would give his life to rescue us, where he would give everything for you and for me. You know, at the cross, our deepest need is met because that's where our sin has been paid for. And that's where Jesus has won forgiveness and freedom for us. You know, Jesus calls us on a mission as well. He calls us on a mission to follow him that, that sometimes might mean giving up our first choices of the way that we'd want to do things so that we can follow God. And the devil will often try to distract us from the path and, and take us off on another path and, and tempt us with things that, that seem really good and really appealing, but in the end are a little bit hollow and don't really bring the fulfilment that we hoped that they would. Jesus calls us on a path of service to others. He calls us on a path of being ready to set things down, to give things up for him so that we might honour him and love him and show his love to others. And he promises us too that he will give us his Holy Spirit within us to help us when we face temptations, when we face hard times, to choose the right way, to be wise and to do the things and to live the way that pleases God and honours him and is a blessing to others. So now it's time for us to say together some of the, the things that we believe about God and about Jesus in particular. So we're going to use this affirmation of faith. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're going to bring to God our Father our prayers for others, and some of our children and young people are going to lead us. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, after you fasted in the desert, you were hungry. You know what hunger feels like. Thank you for the food we have to enjoy. We pray for the people who don't have enough money to buy food for their families. 
We pray for the food banks in our community to help us support them whenever we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you were alone in the desert. We pray for people who live alone or who are missing family and friends at the moment. Thank you that you are always with us. Give us hope for the time we can all be together again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you were tempted to believe that owning more possessions would make you happy. Help us to remember that you are our greatest joy and treasure. Help us this Lent to be generous people ready to share what we have with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, when you were in need, the angels came to help you. We pray for people who are sick at the moment, especially anyone we know ourselves. Please help them to get better soon, although we are no angels. Help us to play our part in caring for those in need. Please give fresh energy to everyone who works in our hospitals at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It's time for our last song of praise this morning, and we're going to sing, We Want to See Jesus Lifted High. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and to follow him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.